Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are factoring quadratic trinomials today. Um, we're factoring, there are two lessons on factoring trinomials, and this is a quadratic trinomial, and we're factoring it from something that looks like this into two binomials that look like that. And we'll talk about how to do that and the steps. First, I want to give a little bit of background, kind of describing what it is that, that we're going to do. The easiest way to factor a quadratic trinomial is if you have perfect square trinomials. And those are discussed in a different lesson. If, there, if the trinomial is not a perfect square, then the next preferred method is what I'm going to show you in this lesson. So basically, the trinomials can become increasingly difficult, and there's n different ways to factor them. But the easiest way we're, we showed first with perfect square trinomials, and then the next way is what I'm going to talk about today. It requires that there's no number in front of the first term, so no coefficient of x. Oftentimes, we call the coefficients in these three terms a, b, and c. And so sometimes you'll say that the coefficient of x squared, which is a, a is, and then they'll give some sort of number. So in other words, it requires for us to be able to do it properly, it requires that a equals 1, because the coefficient of x squared would be 1. With any other number, this is not going to work. So there's what we're going to be working with today. What is a quadratic trinomial? When we use big words like that, I'd like to describe what they mean. A quadratic means that it is squared, right? Quad and squared. So it will usually be x squared. It could be y squared or a squared or b squared. But it's going to be a variable squared. And that's what quadratic, squared, you know, square and quad, they kind of go together. The trinomial means that it has three parts or three terms that cannot be joined together. So three terms with distinctly different variables, x squared, x and then no variable. That's basically what we're going to be looking at. So here's a perfect example of a quadratic trinomial. We're actually going to use that one to factor and get our final answer here. Let's take a look at factoring this quadratic trinomial. The first step is to list the factors of the first, of the final term, I'm sorry. So we look at the final term 2. And we list the factors of that final term. The factors are 1 times 2. And we list them in pairs. So 1 times 2. And we also have to list the fact that there are some negatives as well. Negative 1 times negative 2 would also give us a positive 2. So those are the factors, the you know, integer factors of our final term. The next step is that we find the sum of those factors. So we look at those factors and add them up. 1 plus 2 is 3. And negative 1 plus negative 2 will give us negative 3. So we have the factors listed on the left and the, the sum listed on the right. And what we are looking for is the two numbers, the two factors, that will add up, have the sum of the middle term, and the product of the final term. We know both of them have the product of the final term. That's how we came up with these numbers. So we really don't have to look too much at the final term. What we're looking at is do they add up to give us the middle term, including the sign. So they have to give us the sign and the term. So in this case, I'm going to move this up to here. We are going to look at the, the factors 1 and 2. 1 times 2 gives us the final term. 1 plus 2 gives us the middle term. That's what we're looking for. And we take those two numbers, and we're going to put them inside of those binomials, or the two sets of parentheses that we talked about earlier. Inside these, we are going to put two pieces of information. First, we factor that first term into the only thing it can be, which is x times x. So x and x go there and there. And then the factors of the final term will go here and here. And we include the signs. This is positive 1 and positive 2, so we plus 1, plus 2. And that's what goes inside of those binomials, or those, those sets of parentheses 
that each contain a binomial. The first time looking through this, it's going to be pretty complicated. But that's it. Those are all of the steps. And we're going to do a couple of practice questions that will help us to become a little bit more comfortable with it. Let's factor this one. x squared minus 5x plus 6. Remember our steps. First, we list the factors of our final term. The factors of positive 6 are 1 and 6, negative 1 and negative 6, positive 2, positive 3, and negative 2, negative 3. You'll notice that the bigger this number gets, the more factors we might have. So we have to make sure to list all of them and include the positives and negatives. Now we're going to add them up. 1 plus 6 is 7. Negative 1 and negative 6 is negative 7. 2 plus 3 is 5. And negative 2 plus negative 3 gives us negative 5. That's the one we're looking for. Because we really, we really only have to do this until we find the sum that gives us the middle term. So immediately when we look at that, we might start saying, oh, I, I know which one I'm looking for. And this step we might often do also inside of our heads when we get a little bit quicker at it. The factors negative 2 and negative 3 will go into the parentheses there. The x's are always going to be the same, x in the first, x in the second, when, when you don't have a number in front of x. And the order does not matter. If you put negative 3 and negative 2 here, it wouldn't really matter. Now, just to emphasize what it is that we're doing, I want to show you a quick check of this work. And this goes back to if you use the FOIL method, which I don't like, or you use the distributive property, you can multiply x times both terms and then negative 2 times both terms and check our work. x times x gives us x squared x times negative 3 is negative 3x, negative 2x, and positive 6 is negative 2 times negative 3 will give us positive 6. We join together our like terms. And if you do a check, basically you're undoing the factor. And you should end up with what you had for your original question. All right? So you can check your work by using either FOIL or just the distributive property. And you should be able to get down to your final answer. I'm not going to show a check with every single one. I just wanted to emphasize that you can do that just to make sure that your work is correct. Because sometimes you might wonder with, with the positives and negatives, and it might be, you might want to do a check. All right. Let's do one that has a really wild final term, 24. That's going to give us lots of different factors and our middle term of 10, a middle number of 10, I should say. There we go. So, Negative 24 is our final term. So we have to multiply a positive times a negative in each case. So positive 1, negative 24, po negative 1, positive 24, 2, 12, 3, 8, 4, 6. All of these can be multiplied together to give us negative 24. What we're looking for is the one set that will add together to give us a positive 10. So let's look. I mean, I did all of them, but really, if you started at the beginning, you, would, you could stop when you got to this point. Negative 2 plus 12 gives us a positive 10. You could have stopped there. I went ahead and listed all the other ones, but again, we're just looking for the sum that makes us the, the middle term, the middle number, with the sign, and they multiply together to give us our final term. Negative 2, positive 12 does that. So. We'll set up our parentheses, make sure that we have x in both of the beginning of both binomials. We will take the negative 2 and the positive 12, put them in there, and we are done. All right, that's how you factor a trinomial, a quadratic trinomial. I'm going to go ahead and show one more example here. This example is 2x squared minus 12x minus 14. That one there is a little bit different because there's a number in front of the x squared. Now, normally, there's a, different, there's a whole different method for solving these ones that have that number in front of the x squared or the coefficient of x squared or a value of a. This would be a, b, and c. But with this one, it's actually pretty easy. Watch what we're going to do. We're going to factor out a common factor from all three terms. And we did this in the previous lesson. If you look at this, there's a factor of 2 
for each number. Each term has, is divisible by 2. So I can factor 2 out of each term. And that leaves me with a trinomial quadratic that I can actually factor. A really nice one, actually, because 7 is a prime number. So the factors of 7 can only be 1 and 7. It has to be one of those two. either. And because this is negative, it's either going to be 1 and negative 7 or negative 1 and positive 7. So I go ahead and find the sum for those. And I'm looking for the one that adds up to negative 6. So positive 1 and negative 7 will give me negative 6 as my sum. So I just plug those into there. In this one here, I have to remember I do have that 2 outside there. So that's part of my full answer. So it's 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 7. And if you did a check of that entire thing, like what we did before, you'll find that that gets you back to your original quadratic. Quick summary, when you're factoring a quadratic, you want to find two numbers that give you the sum of the middle number and the product of the final number. Make sure to pay attention to positive and negative signs. And this will get faster with practice. Once you start recognizing those factors, it'll become pretty quick. Also, thanks, as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my math channel for more math lessons. There's a whole playlist of all Algebra 1 lessons that go along with this one and work kind of in conjunction with it. There's also specific lessons if you want to just search through my channel. And I've made up a channel or a playlist of just random silly how-to videos just for your enjoyment. So keep watching, subscribe, share, and like them. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.